speak on rehabilitation as Commissioner General of Rehabilitation. He joined the Army as an officer cadet in August 1981 and was posted to the Corps of the Sri Lanka Engineers. He has held many key command staff and instructor appointments and most notably he was uh, uh, commanding officer of the Sri Lanka Military Academy at the Atalava, which is where we first met. But apart from all his other work, he also served recently as uh, Brigadier General Staff of Security Forces Headquarters, Wanni, during the humanitarian operation, working directly with the current Army Commander. And was, uh, they were re responsible together with the competent authority for the initial receipt of the IDPs and the establishment of the facilities. He is now Commissioner General of Rehabilitation and during his outstanding military career, he was decorated with two gallantry medals and the Deshaputra Wounded in Action Medal. He holds a master's degree and a master of science in war studies from the National Defense University in Islamabad, as well as a diploma in personnel management from the National Institute of Business Management of Sri Lanka. He's also a graduate of the war course from National Defense University, Pakistan, and a staff qualified officer. Uh, General Ranasinghe. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the first traces of rehabilitation began when the security forces laid down their arms to quench the thirsty, feed the hungry, nurse the wounded, carry the elders, dress the relatives, and brought the child that was the cyanide capsule and carrying a gun back to their parents. In May 2009, a large number of ex-combatants reported for rehabilitation willingly, having complete confidence in the security forces. It's no secret that by making the best use of issues on the slide, terrorist leadership took advantage to remold susceptible individuals especially the youth, to their likings to meet their wasted ends. The government of Sri Lanka made numerous attempts to talk peace with LTT, but the LTT leadership, who overestimated themselves, declined the generous offers made by the, His Excellency the President. Thus, the government of Sri Lanka had no option but to physically eliminate the terrorism. Though we cleared the tip of the iceberg, the remnants went to the bottom of the ocean, which became the challenge for the Bureau of the Commissioner General Rehabilitation. The Sri Lanka rehabilitation process for its combatants was specially developed and designed to suit the culture and ethics, norms and values, and religious sentiments of Sri Lankan population, especially the Tamil-speaking population of North and East. The goals of the Rehabilitation Action Plan is threefold. First, to safeguard the human rights of rehabilitees, victims, the community, and the state's international obligations. Two, to contribute towards sustainable peace, reconciliation, psychological and economical, and social cohesion. To increase the employability of rehabilities and to create opportunities for economical revitalization. These goals are achieved through a set of principles safeguards to protect the rights and security of rehabilities, victims, and the community. Equality of assistances, gender equity and responsiveness, confidentiality of data, and prevention of stigmatization, and finally, adopting a demand-driven approach on socioeconomic rehabilitation. Out of approximately 300,000 IDPs, 
11,664 ex-combatants either surrendered or were forced to surrender. Or the rehabilitees who joined the rehabilitation process declared their willingness by written declarations together with surrender statements. Ladies and gentlemen, as you, see, as you can see on this slide, there were 594 child combatants, 2,033 female combatants, and 9,037 male combatants. With the separation of ex-combatants from normal IDPs, they were accommodated at 24 protective accommodation and rehabilitation centers, which was commonly called as PARKs. Initial grouping was done the way they were collected for subsequent segregation as per their profiles. All parks were provided with making contacts with their family and friends, which was given the highest priority, security, water, sanitation, food and nutrition, health and psychosocial support, NFRIs, and most importantly, access for all UN agencies. At these centers, a comprehensive study on all ex-combatants were carried out with intelligence agencies, followed up with dynamic psychosocial and socio-economic profiling, in liaison with profiling experts and professionals such as clinical psychologists, psychiatrists, medical officers, and counselors. Under these profilings, level of radicalization and talents and experiences were assessed. As per the findings of the profilings, rehabilities were guided to undergo educational, vocational and skills development programs along with development of mental tranquility, spiritual enhancement and expansion of moral values to prepare them to rejoin the community. Ladies and gentlemen, the rehabilitation process was officially commenced on 1st October 2009. Regrouping of all ex-combatants to centers were carried out as a result of findings of profiling assessments. Personal files were developed and maintained to assess their progress in rehabilitation. A legal framework for rehabilitation was approved by the Attorney General's office and all centers were gazetted. Finally, level of radicalization of each and every rehabilitee was assessed. Use of language was given the highest priority from the commencement of proper rehabilitation program to prevent continuation of stigmatization on beneficiaries. Further, a friendly atmosphere was developed for the ex-combatants to feel safe and responsive during the process. Words like ex-combatants, former fighters, LTTS were never used in the rehabilitation process. This way, all ex-combatants became beneficiaries and all child soldiers became our children. The rehabilitation program is designed on six main areas and a special program for the community. Spiritual, religious and cultural rehabilitation was given the highest priority. It was not only the beneficiaries but the staff of the rehabilitation centers too involved in this religious, spiritual, and cultural rehabilitation together with the rehabilities as one team. Educational and vocational rehabilitation, including livelihood rehabilitation, went together. Social, community, and family rehabilitation was given another priority. Large amount, number of rehabilitees were given leave to attend their family functions, weddings, funerals, and there, were not, there was not a single decision. Everyone came back. Psychological and creative therapies, and finally sports and extracurricular activities. There have been a lot of interaction programs, youth from south going to rehabilitation centers and rehabilitees coming to Colombia and other areas to see the normal lifestyle. And day after tomorrow we'll be having a mega cricket carnival, a musical show and cultural show in Waunia. A large number of youth from Colombia going to Waunia for this program. Evanas Racing Program for religious leaders and community leaders on rehabilitation and reintegration of its combatants into the community was organized. 
mainly educate the government officials, religious and community leaders on the rehabilitation and reintegration process in order to clear doubts and uncertainties of the community in accepting these beneficiaries to work together for unity and peace. This is part of psychological rehabilitation as Dr. David Kilkulan mentioned on the first day of the seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, Sri Lanka is the only country who reintegrated 70% of the ex-combatants back to the community with a mere one and a half years time frame. Mind you, this is after 30 years of fighting. So far we have reintegrated 6,596 beneficiaries back to the community. At present, there are 4,301 rehabilitees undergoing the rehabilitation at nine centers. Government of Sri Lanka has spent over 150 million Sri Lankan rupees per month during the first year of rehabilitation. With the reintegration process and reduction in numbers, the amount started to decrease. But to maintain the present strength, still the government of Sri Lanka is spending approximately 64.5 million Sri Lankan rupees per month. The total expenditure for the first year was a staggering 1.8 billion Sri Lankan rupees, and for the second year it amounts to 774 million Sri Lankan rupees. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'll talk a little on some of the rehabilitation programs, and due to time constraints, we'll be just talking only about the 25% of the programs that we have conducted. Starting with the child combatants, there are 594 child combatants including 231 girls, voluntarily surrendered to the security forces for the rehabilitation. Out of this number, 273, including 120 girls, opted to continue with their formal education. The Bureau made special arrangements to transfer these children to a leading Tamil school in Colombo, where they underwent proper formal education for one year prior to reintegration. The balance, including 112 girls, underwent proper vocational training at Technical College Wauniya under the Vocational Training Authority. Programs conducted for children are as shown on the slide.